pre-season planning is uh, trying to get us into two kind of combined situations. We're trying to get the players fit for the season ahead and for the season at length. Um, and we're also tr trying to prepare the team in terms of how the manager wants to play. So we're, try we're having to do both at the same time. Um, fundamentally nowadays players come back in a good state of fitness. So um, most of the time we're just topping that off and getting straight into the work that the manager wants to do tactically and how the team wants to play. We use a lot of different strategies to get players fit. Some of those will be with the ball. In fact, a lot of the training we do nowadays is with the ball. But we still use traditional methods of, of running um, to, to get some of the goals that we need uh, for the season. Um, we also use a lot of gym work um, and, and recovery strategies too. Training is a lot more intense nowadays. Um, we're trying to get a lot more done in a lot less time. Um, we have a lot of technology that we employ to, to track players and the amount of load that we're giving. Um, and a major issue that we have is allowing the players to recover between sessions. So certainly the sports nutrition and sports hydration becomes very, very important to them. And we're trying to use the best products and the best supplements that we can use in order to speed up that recovery process. So we, we use a number of different types of gym sessions. So fundamentally the players place an awful lot of load on their legs and the lower body. So we have to do an awful lot of work there and making sure they're strong and powerful and explosive in the lower body. Um, they're also that they're very robust, so we have to do a lot of work on stability, proprioception and balance as well. So, so they're fundamentals really to the players because the legs are, are such a key part to their performance. But also upper body wise now they need to make sure they're very strong. Okay, They're dealing with a lot of jewels, especially in the championship which is a highly uh, physical league. Uh, they've got to be strong enough to deal with a lot of duels and uh, contact situations. So we do uh, upper body sessions for them as well. Um, and then of course core stability, um, that ties the two together. So if we've got players who might be strong in their upper body and lower body but have a weak core, they're going to lose something there. So we also put uh, an emphasis on making sure that core is strong. A social footballer is going to try and mimic the pros, um, they need to try and get the volume of training in as well. So the players here are doing you know, six to eight hours of physical training per week um, as well as the game. So they need to match that type of output if they want to train at that level. But certainly when they go down to the gym it's about working at a good intensity. It's not about necessarily spending a long time there but it means that the time that you are spending there, maybe from half an hour to 45 minutes of of conditioning work and weights um, and strength and conditioning work, um, you know, the data at a good intensity. Really, they should be moving from exercise to exercise to exercise to keep their intensity up um, rather than doing one set and then waiting three or four minutes. They need to be looking at uh, complex movements as well, so triple extension exercises, squats and power cleans are of course important, but also a lot of work that you do in football is going to be in a single leg position, so single leg RDLs and single leg squats are important too for stability in the knee, ankle and hip, so um, certainly making sure that they spend some time working on those. Well, it's, it's all about balancing the work that we give them, you know, um, we, we test and we monitor all the time, so when the players leave at the end of the season we test to know how good they are and the closed season programme becomes vital to them um, if they want to stay injury free and uh, perform well, uh, they need to come back in good, good condition, so don't try and start, you know, from a low level and hit it hard because you will break. So make sure that you've done some fundamental work before you start your main program and then build the load. Recover well and give yourself some time down from your intense sessions because you can't just do a lot of heavy training and not expect that uh, you're going to break at some stage. Well, the 
main ones that we'll use with the players are going to be um, going to be protein. We're going to use protein for all of the recovery sessions and for all of the strength building sessions. And then going into uh, games themselves, we'll use things like branch chain amino acids to make sure that the players are nice and sharp. Um, and then we'll mix other products as we see fit. We'll use creatine when we're on uh, power, power and explosive sessions that we want to increase the players. Uh, ability to work at high intensities um, and other products that we might use like glutamine in order to support the immune system.